today we're here with Lou McCable and Doug D'Anthony. And it looks like Buford, you don't have your straw hat on today. Well, that's because I'm uh, just Lou, and uh, right. I don't really wear a straw hat very often, and uh, that's part of the character. And I'm an actor. That's Buford. Okay, Carla, where's your harmonica? Oh, uh, well, I'll tell you. No. Uh, since it's Doug D. Anthony, I'm just going to go ahead and leave that back at the fort, you know, at the, on the set. Because, yeah, when you're talking to the actors now, uh, I don't I see it. Uh, have you seen Carlisle? <laughs> okay. Okay, so tell me, how did the two of you meet? Well, we met because uh, I saw this flyer for Voice Over Network. Right. And it said, do you have one of those voices? And uh, I've been doing character voices my whole life. Just, you know, I was a teacher. I did it with the kids, and they loved that and, and everything. So I thought, you know what, I'm a, I looked at that. I said, I'm going to call that number. I did. I met Doug, and uh, we sort of hit it off right from the beginning. It was, you know. Right. Uh, our organization is based on vocal development. Uh, as their entertainment, and uh, as, as he says, he pick up the flyer. But, you know, above and beyond that, you know, we have a 10-week boot camp for the voiceover talent if they want to come in and graduate. But this guy stuck around. I mean, it wasn't just a thing where he did the voiceover thing. He knew that there was something uh, in terms of the synergistic nature of the duo of him and I. Because when I was instructing, he would throw little voices out there and I would throw them back. Yeah, this doesn't happen with everybody. You know, I mean, there's times when uh, we'll get a client that we click with, but Lou was not just a talent, he was a creative force, and I could see it. You know, I could see that there was a scriptwriter, that there was a comedian, that there was somebody who potentially, you know, could go out and actually uh, uh, partner on things. Great. Yeah. So he wasn't a student that just took his course and left and you never no. heard from him? No, by no means. You no. guys had a connection. Yeah. Great. Okay, um, now tell me what inspired or motivated you to do the Tar and Feathers show? He brought in a concept, um, again, you know, creative guy. He comes in with this concept of, uh, you, you, you called it the Senior Trailer Park Companion. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the concept was loosely based on a Struther Martin, you know, like uh, what we have here is failure to communicate, you know, from the cool hand Luke, uh, the straw hat, and, and the, uh, the southern shirt and the whip, except without the whip. He was going around uh, like Hugh Hauser, this, this, this character technically, uh, allegedly was going to go around and interview people in the trailer parks. You take it from there. I have a, a friend who lived in um, a home park and uh, first I'd never been to one in my life really, but she speaks with this uh, really sweet Texas accent and I started copying her when we would go out and the people thought that we were just both from Texas and it was pretty funny to me and my friend, her name's Janice, she didn't even know I was doing it. She didn't even know that I was putting this accent on. She just, you know, and wow. and from that, I just started making up stuff around her place and with the people there. And uh, but the but the but the the uh, crossroads, so to speak, was where we took that basic character, and I said he he was calling it uh, Tarn Feathers. Uh, I don't have a name for my character. I said, well, how about your Buford? And he goes, Buford. I said, yeah, you're Buford. Buford Tarn, T-A-R-Y-N. Okay. And I'm Carlisle Feathers. I'm going to be kind of like the Jethro from the Beverly Hillbillies, <laughs> who's not quite all there, but is not completely stupid, you know. I, I, I know my, my uh, times tables, you know. But, uh, I would be kind of like the uh, uh, Tommy Smothers to his brother Dickie. And it would be a couple of hicks from the Carolinas a la the Smothers Brothers, but his character separately was like a Struther Martin, and mine was like a Jethro, and that's how Tar and Feathers, I said, you're Buford Tarn, and I'm Carlisle Feathers, and together, we are Tar, tar and, and Feathers. feathers. Oh, that's that's great. how it came out. And the, the other thing I want you to know is that uh, through my uh, experience with these, all these other Southern characters that I've watched, to me it was like, the city slickers were always trying uh, to win them, to, to, to get them, to, to do something against them, or to take, you know, and the, and the bump, and they hoodwink would always, them, to hoodwink them, and so. they would always turn the tables That's right. on, on them, and so it's like, you know, I never <laughs> thought that Southerners, you know, they play this dumb character, but oh. they're not. They're, right. they're sly like a fox, and yeah. that's why I like Good point. it. point. Excellent point. Yeah. You know? yeah, like we always assume that because they're Southern, they're dumb. 
And if you watch people like the blue collar comedy team, Larry the Cable Guy, Jeff Foxworthy, you realize that even though they may have an accent, these guys are pretty witty. Very, they know what's going on. They're very sharp, that's and right. that's and they get they always win. They win. Ultimately. They don't get yeah. Yeah. That's why I like. Yeah. <laughs> While we're making fun of them, they win. That's right. Yeah. Great. Well, since um, you started Tarn Feathers, was um, is there anything in particular you you were trying to achieve or accomplish with the show, or were you just having fun? Um, Hopefully we're having fun. I think yeah, we're having fun. It seems like you are. S some of it is fun. I, I know it, it, it has to be funny and you want to do it. But uh, a lot of it was that uh, I think that uh, what's missing today is a variety concept. Yeah. And, I, and I know reality is good and all that stuff, but I miss Carol Burnett. I miss uh, all those shows from the past. Smothers Brothers, Smothers Brothers Share. Brothers. I think a lot of people yeah. do. We, we, yes. You know, because... Every week you'd see the, the, the people that are stars, but you'd also see these other guests and, that, and they're, they're working together just made it fun and it just made it interesting and it's like you... It's a great synergy, uh, yeah. the word we use in the industry, uh, because you know, these shows, these variety shows, even though they have said in the past 10 years or so that, oh, we tried it and that's passe, no, you do it with a twist. Mm -hmm. And you do it so that it's, it's not a game show, it's not a showcase of talent, it's not just a bunch of people doing slapstick. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of everything, right? And these two hicks, tar and feathers, why not, you know, host a show with great singers, with, uh, you know, all a variety show, with uh, a, a great, um, you know, actors and uh, uh, people of, of uh, notoriety. Uh, they can just make uh, anything happen that they want, really, in Hollywood. So why not these two guys? Why couldn't they host a show? Uh, certainly, uh, uh, why not? Yeah, certainly. Uh, it's it's even though they can say it hasn't been done, it could be done. Okay. Well, great. Um, we're going to take a break, and we'll okay. be right back. Do you want to advertise your business or service on the Tarn Feather Show? You can do it, you know. Just call the number shown on the screen or drop us a card at P.O. Box 41, San Dimas, California, 91773. Briefly describe the nature of your business or service and include a contact telephone number. Any communication will be answered in the order received. Inside okay. joke. Okay, so how do you come up with um, your ideas for each episode? Well, a lot of it is that uh, we uh, have brainstormed uh, what possible things uh, to do, and um, I, I came up with uh, a couple of them, and Doug came up with a couple, and then we then we also uh, collaborate all all the way through. So. It's, it's both of us come up with the ideas. I think, too, a lot of it, and that's true, is, uh, is based on our own interests. Okay. I mean, we, you know, sure, we're Buford and Carlisle, but a lot of our own personal interests and, and skills go into these characters. You know, like, I do archery, so we have an archery episode. Okay. Uh, he does bachelor cooking, and so we have a bachelor <laughs> cooking episode. I mean... And golfing. And right golfing. Right? He's a golfer. He's an avid golfer. Okay. He got me out there. We won't get into that now, but, <laughs> um, yeah. but I'll tell you, he took Carlisle through some changes. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that. Yeah. Oh, Carlisle took himself through some changes too. <laughs> okay, so um, what do each of you feel you contribute to the show, both um, separately and together? Right. I, I, the hat that I wear mostly, Carmen, is uh, producer, executive director. Uh, he is co-producer, co-director, but since he's a student of film, and I'm going to let him get into that a little bit more uh, as he started earlier, um, I kind of lead and he follows to a point because that's my frame of reference. Okay, but in terms of when we actually get out there on the front lines and the content, like the golf or the cooking or whatever, he's leading and I'm following, non-technically speaking. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, there are some ideas in terms of the actual writing and the, uh, the collaborative uh, effort, uh, ideas, if you will, that absolutely um, 
I have to say, I, I would not have come up with uh, without Lou. Wow. <laughs> Be flattered. Anything you want to add, Lou? Just that it's, you know, these shows are just personal experience and we try to put a comedic twist on right. that. And it's just, it, in other words, it's not a, it's not a travelogue. Mm -hmm. It's, it's not, not exactly. you know, not like, it, it's not Hugh, but uh, Huel. But what we do is we take from these different individuals and we sort of incorporate them to, so it's an eclectic Kind of, a, you know, kind of thing. Hugh Hauser, Struther Martin, Jethro from the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, again, these are two hicks. These are two guys from the Carolinas, stereotypically speaking. But they're likable, hopefully, and they're, they're approachable. Uh, and they disseminate information. Uh, some of it um, argumentatively between the two characters. <laughs> but it's all good in the end. It's friendly. Great. Yeah. Well, um... How, how do you create each episode? Is it rehearsed or, or how much of it is scripted? You go. Well, what we uh, start off with is a skeleton. Uh, and uh, I'd, I'd say it's 70 to 80 percent what we kind of, uh, it's called semi scripted because. Right, semi scripted we're, format. Because we're not uh, holding to a particular line of, of dialogue, but what we do is. We work around the framework till we get to what we think works the best. Right. All film, all, all well, not all film, let me rephrase. Most variety formats, uh, whether it's a, a short or a full hour show, is based on a semi scripted uh, concept um, with counterpoint. And I think that's an important point um, uh, at the risk of sounding redundant. Uh, counterpoint is where you've got the main ideas coming in and then something totally off the wall for shock value. You know, like the puma in mm -hmm. the cooking episode. Or, uh, what, what about the puma? Was it, wasn't that a real puma? Oh, it was a real puma, but what I mean is we use stock footage in order to... to Aid the illusion. Oh, it wasn't uh, an another, actual puma. It, it was, but it wasn't actually there. There. Oh, <laughs> yeah. wow. and, and her kitty ending up, oh, please save my kitty, ending up being a puma is considered yeah, a Yeah, that was point. a big kitty. Right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> right, and then, you know, uh, you're going along and things look like they're predictable and all of a sudden it takes a turn. Uh, that's what I mean by counterpoint. Yeah, you know, it, funny. Those are the things that Benny Hill, you know, and, and a lot of uh, Monty Python uh, played off of. It sounds like you guys had a lot of influence.